This year I'm on a mission to create more machine knitters and I got one close to me. This is my friend Rachel, come into frame. <laughs> She made some vague comments about wanting something to machine knit, so I found her a knitting machine. <laughs> this is why you should talk to your fiber arts friends when you're looking for a machine. They know people. So Rachel, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Rachel, and uh, I guess- oh god, this is hard. <laughs> it is hard, but it'll be okay. So, I, I guess I would say I'm, uh, I'm a fashion designer and a software engineer. Although probably software engineer first. <laughs> what other fiber crafts do you do? I crochet. You hand knit? I do hand knit. I started knitting during the pandemic, although I'd been crocheting for a real long time. This one took me probably over a year. Because <laughs> you know I'm not very fast at it. What pattern is that? Uh, this is the Ankistrick Summer Tea. We will link that in the description. Yeah. <laughs> so we found a vintage Brother 910 for Rachel at the uh, Evil Mad Scientist garage sale. It was one of the ones used to develop the Evil Mad Scientist uh, AYAB interface. So today we're going to check this machine out and get Rachel started. So first thing is grab the machine. It's back here. I want to make sure that you can pick it up. <laughs> I was lifting out. I was yeah, lifting, working out just for this. Oh wait, so first thing, don't pick it up by the handle. Oh, okay. Because this is 40 year old plastic. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Got it. Got it. All right. So grab it. Oh wow, this is heavier than I thought. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to okay. put it here on the stand. And actually this is the front and the handle part is the back. Okay. I should have looked at this differently. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we've got cover your sweater. That's something you learn as you learn, as you start knitting. All right. I don't know if that's on securely. Yeah. So what we're looking for is trying to get. And where do you get the stand? The stand I got with my knitting machine. It came bundled together because I bought it secondhand. They aren't manufactured anymore, as far as I can tell. But you can find them on eBay from time to time. Okay. Let's just try to center this. So there are brackets on the bottom. That can you to also, put. you can also just put it on the edge of a table, right? Yeah, you can put it on the edge of a table. Where are your brackets? Oh, you did not have the brackets. Oh, the brackets have come off. Okay, you may not be able to use your ribber with this. <laughs> but we're gonna figure it out. So if we look at... Oh, I see those brackets down there. That's where clamps go into. This is one of the joys of vintage machines. You could probably find them on Etsy, to be honest. All right, let's pop this puppy open. Okay, so this side is the front, that side is the back, and there should be clamps on the back. All right. Flip them open. Let's see. And then the whole cover will come off. And there's stuff that's poked inside the cover. Oh yeah, there is. And it's stuck on the machine. There we go. Okay. All right, and then with this stand, this little thing down here, farther away, this port will be top of your machine. Ta-da! Oh, okay. Got it. So, on the top of the bed, the first thing we have is a box of tools. Take a look. <laughs> the overhead camera's getting out. Oh, okay. It's on top of the machine. <laughs> Uh, so here we have weights, clamps, which your machine does not have space for, but you can probably get a placement for. This is called a plating feeder. It fits into the uh, sinker plate and lets you use multiple yarns at the same time. Okay. So that like one's on the outside and one's on the inside and you create reversible fabric. This is wax. It's going to go in the tension mast. If you're using any kind of fuzzy yarn like mohair, it helps cut down on the fuzz that gets stuck in the machine. Um, this is knitting machine oil. Is that just like standard sewing machine oil type stuff? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So this is not manufactured anymore. You cannot get it anywhere. And I think it is slightly different from sewing machine oil. And I cannot get a straight answer out of pretty much anybody about what kind of oil you should use on a knitting machine. But you're probably fine with sewing machine oil or gun oil. Okay. Just nothing with silicone in it. Uh, and then a little brush to help get the fluff out. And then this marker was probably for marking the mylars. So this machine reads information from mylars that we have somewhere. Oh, they're over here. These are just the manuals, if you want to take a look. And then these are the mylar sheets that the machine would read if the mylar thing were working correctly. These some, it comes with some that are already marked and they would feed through here. And there's a little optical sensor that reads it. Yeah, you also cannot get these anymore. <laughs> There's some people experimenting online with various different 
um, kinds of paper and like Cricut machines to get the edges. Yeah. But no one has a good solution yet for replacing these. And they tend to break down if they're in sunlight. So oh, be careful with them if you want to keep them. But this particular machine, the Mylar reader does not work correctly. Do these come with my machine? Yep. Oh. 40 year old Mylars. And this little clippy, I believe, is to help hold up the Mylars. And then we have a tiny, tiny crochet hook for fixing mistakes and um, like doing edges and stuff. And then this is a needle pusher tool with some markings on it. Pull out some needles. There you go. That's so how you get a regular needle. And then I guess you just do the top and then back. Yep. And then this is where your tools are going to sit. Make it easier to work with. And then in here we have some transfer tools. Yeah, I've seen you use these on the videos. Yeah. <laughs> so every machine should come with a 3x1, a 2x1, and a 2x3. And you'll use whatever depending on what you're doing. And then this is a latch-up tool. And I believe this is actually just a needle with a handle on it. <laughs> okay. For good. making reformed ribbing. You, you store these here too? Yep. Okay. Ones that you're using. I generally have the 1x1 one one needle pusher, a 1x3, my latch hook, and a tiny pair of scissors in here at all times. So cool. that's your box of tools that is not going to close. Okay. Just live back here. And let's look at the things that are in the back here. So the first thing we should look at is the sinker plate. See if you can pull that out. Yeah, right, you move yeah. the, the metal thing over. Okay. I'm, I'm very, because the whole, it's 40 years old, I'm very nervous about breaking Right, but most of it's metal. Okay. So this is a sinker plate that hooks into here and that lets you knit, but first we need to pull this off the bed. So this is the carriage and it's locked in here with this metal thing. You have to unscrew the knob and then pull it out. Not all the way. Oh, okay. Just, I don't need yeah. just to loosen it up. Yep. Or, all right, take this off. Yep. And okay. then that, you should hold onto that because you're going to need it later. Okay. Nope, don't leave, like, leave oh. the carriage. Okay. <laughs> Just take the metal thing off. Okay, can you put that in the back of the thing? This. Yeah. Okay. This is the, the main carriage. And then in the back here we have the lace carriage. You have to pull down on the carriage release mechanism, which is the thing in the back there. This? Yep. Mm. It might be a little stuck. Sometimes the lubricant gets a little gloopy. Like I said, a little nervous about breaking. It should be fine. These are pretty sturdy. Pull down Stuck. I don't know which door here. down in this case. Let me... So this should fit in there. Oh, so you're pulling that in. Yep. Okay, so it was like... Oh, okay. got it. And that's how you get it off the timing belt too. So this one we have to slide on from the edge. So the handle will fold out. And then we can slide it onto the edge here. You wouldn't use both of them at the same time. You do actually. Oh. When you make lace on a brother knitting machine, you use one carriage to knit the stuff because all this does is it swaps. So if there's a needle sticking out far enough, it'll try to transfer that stitch to the next stitch. Okay. And okay. that'll do it on the leading edge and the trailing edge will pick up patterning information from the machine. Does uh, is this like hook into it? Nope. So the, all right, one more thing in the back here. We have, I don't know how to get these out. These are rails. I'm sure okay. they have an official name, but they fit into the side of the machine. They fit like here. There should be holes yeah. here. Nice. Nope. There you go. It's got a little catch. So you'll put that one on that side and this one on the other side, but the lights are in the way. Okay. And then you will leave the main carriage parked all the way off the side of the bed on the rail. And then like do your knitting with the lace carriage. Okay. And then so I see that lets you leave it on the rail. Mm -hmm. Move all the way and then in each direction. Yeah. Okay. So it's usually two passes of the lace carriage and then two passes of the main carriage. Different kinds of lace do different things. You'll have to like figure it out as you go. And the lace pattern should tell you unless you're making it yourself. Sometimes you do like five or six passes of the lace carriage. Okay. You generally go until there are no more needles selected. Got it. So okay. got the lace carriage off. Just like set it in the back for now. Okay. Yeah, that up to you. It's got the convenient decal thing on the bottom to help tell you where it goes. We'll just set it. Yeah. 
So the other thing in here is the tension fast, which is very stuck in there. How did it get so stuck in there? So I'm never getting any of this stuff back in here. No, we will. I will show you at the end how to put this all back. Okay, so this is a tension mast. This is will feed your yarn in for you. And generally, this bit folds up, folds this way. So this is the equivalent of having it wrapped around my finger. Yeah. Okay. So this folds up, and then the wires also fold up. And then we can put it on the bed. It goes in this slot here. Ta-da! And then we will feed the yarn up through the guide here and then up through. These are like um, the tension thingies on a sewing machine. Oh, nice. Okay. And then through the guide wire and down through here and then it'll knit this way. Okay. We would normally put clamps on here. So there are clamps in your toolbox and they would go through the oh, oh, got it. and clamp onto the table. I did actually see those in the manual and wonder what was going on. Yeah. Uh, because there can be a lot of back and forth force on the machine. You don't want it sliding around. Makes sense. So okay. we'll just have a gentle. Yeah. We will be gentle with it for now. After you have purchased and opened up your vintage machine, you gotta make sure that it's in good working order. So the first thing to look at on a brother machine is the sponge bar, which is this little bit that goes underneath the needles here, and there should be a bit of it poking out on that side. I see it's not really poking out, but... Yeah. So generally you have to shove something in there to force it out. All right, we're gonna force it that way. Yep. Keep pushing. So it is hard to get out of there. And as you can see, the needles are starting to pop up because this holds the needles down. Okay. And then you want to make sure that it is squishy. Come over here. They break down over time. Is it just like some closed cell foam or? Yeah, it's foam with fabric over it because the needles run along the bottom and it should be sponge side down. If it's not sponge side down, something is wrong. Okay. <laughs> like somebody installed it incorrectly. This one is in decent shape. But the older machines that haven't been used in like 20 years and have never had these replaced, they'll like fall apart. Got it. This will keep, if you have issues where like the machine is not knitting the way you expect it to, where you're dropping stitches, it's generally because something is wrong with the sponge bar. What does the sponge bar do? It holds the needles down. Okay. It's like a little bit springy and it holds them down to the bed. Rumor that I have heard and can't verify mm -hmm. is that brother added the sponge bar so the dealer has something to do to get you back into the shop. Okay, so the sponge bar would break down and you have to come in to get it replaced and then they could sell you more stuff. <laughs> and while we're here, let's actually look at replacing a needle. So I looked at this before and I think there's a bad needle over here. If we look at that one on the end. Oh yeah, I can see this little head is going to the right. It's, okay. it's also a little rusty. Yes, it is a little rusty. So pull that one all the way out and then the back should pop out and up and out it goes. It's okay to bend it a little bit. All right. And those are really hard to fix, so we're just gonna replace it. And I have a box of fresh needles for you back there. Jeez. You can buy these needles on Etsy, and I will link to a shop. And these are specifically made for the brother? Yes. Uh, you have to be very careful to find the right machine, the right needles for your machine, because some of them don't have them anymore. So wait, 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 wait. Oh you, you gotta go from the top, so <laughs> make sure the latch is closed. Yep. And then go in from the top. Push it down, all the way up, okay, and there we go, and then push it all the way back. There you go, it's good. All right, now we want to put the sponge bar back in. All right. And wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if we try to push it back in now, it's not going to go anywhere because these needles are actually in its path right now. So you need to hold those down, like hold them down with the side of your hand or with the, the needle pusher tool. And then I can push the sponge bar back in. And it just needs to go as far as, like, yep. I guess. It just needs to cover all of them. It needs to, like, cover okay. edge to edge, and it'll be fine. So you want to look at all the needles and make sure that they aren't rusty, and none of them are bent. And if they're, if any of them are, then you need to... How bent them. is bent? Ooh, what do you find? What did you okay. find? Because, like, so here, this guy. If you look, his little hook kind of goes a little left. Hmm, that's not obviously problematic, but if it doesn't knit, it doesn't want to knit, or it causes problems with the carriage, then it needs to be replaced. 
And if it has electronics, you want to check out the electronics, but this one we already know doesn't work because a friend of mine looked at it. There's a capacitor in there that might just need to be charged for a while. And okay. this is a power cable that I put back there. So okay. if you wanted to attempt the Mylars, actually, I would have you join the machine knitting Discord and talk to Adrian directly because she knows how to fix this. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about how knitting machines work. So we call these needles, but they're actually latch hooks. The latch moves back and forth. And what happens is it picks up a loop of yarn. So it, the carriage will push the needle out. The loop will go past the latch hook because we were weighing the whole piece down. And then the carriage will bring in a new loop of yarn and pull it back through the old loop. And that's how we knit. If we select a chunk of needles, we can watch what the carriage does. See, it pushes them out and then it folds them back in. And depending on the settings for the carriage, it'll do different things. But if you look at the edge of the bed over here, you see there are markings A, B, D, and E. I don't know what happened to C. <laughs> Probably lost time. Um, but A is all the way back and those needles aren't gonna knit. B is called working position and that's where these are here. D is upper working position and that's what you do for patterning work. Those needles are treated differently by the carriage. And then E is called hold. That's where the needles are all the way out and that's how you do like short rows and very different kinds of patterning. Okay, and that means, is that kind of like putting it on stitch marker or like a stitch holder? It's a bit like that, yeah. So let's look at the carriage for now. So the carriage will do different things to the needles depending on the settings, but let's look at all of the knobs and buttons and stuff. So up here we have this knob. NL is normal knitting. I don't know. L is for lace. That's it. Okay. <laughs> We have KC1 and KC2, those are for color knitting. Uh, when you have patterning enabled, KC1 and KC2 will do something different with the needles in D position. Okay. And then CR is carriage release, so if you ever just snag or a snarl, you hit you move to carriage release and you can just pull the carriage off the bed. Okay. Um, eject. Eject. <laughs> the I fucked up button. <laughs> but you have to remember to put it back into one of these other settings before you continue knitting or you're going to have problems. And when you do that, it locks it onto the... Yep, locks okay. onto the bed. Um, either KC1 or KC2 also does an end needle selection, which you might want for Fair Isle so that you have consistent salvage. Okay. But you have to look it up in the manual. I never remember which one. Then we have the tension dial. Bigger numbers are bigger stitches. Smaller numbers are smaller stitches. Okay. And then this button here, and it's for normal knitting. H is for hold. So in its current state, if the needles are out and hold, it will still make them. But if you move it to H, I'm going to needle down to hold. I want it. Okay. And then this button just resets these part buttons here. So, tuck. When you hit tuck, and then there are two tuck buttons because you might want to tuck in one direction but not the other. Okay. No, the needles in position D will knit normally, and the needles in position B, which are normal knitting, will, will pick up new loops but not knit them. Okay. Uh, and then with part, I believe needles in working position will not knit at all, like they won't even pick up the new loops, but anything out in upper working position will knit normally. Okay. So that's to do various patterny things. And then MC is for color knitting. So if you want to feed two yarns in and do like fair isle stuff. Okay. Um, and then this button resets everything. Let me show you the fun part. So we can pull the carriage off the bed. And we can watch what happens as we hit different buttons. So, uh, let me clear that. Um, we can see what happens to a needle as it passes through. Like these are needles in A position, just go straight through. And needles in B position, they would get funneled in here and then go through the various latches and levers and wind up elsewhere. Mm. And then this is upper working position and they go through a different path here forced by the levers and latches. And the buttons and dials on the front change what happens there. So like this is the the um, tension dial. You can watch the pieces move. This determines how far back the needles get pulled. And then like that's tuck. Reminds me of model trains. Yes. <laughs> um, and then where's the other dial? That's not as dramatic, but yeah, I can see that. That is, so the carriage hooks into the timing belt on the back here. So we can tell, so that the pattern mechanism can tell where it is. Got it. And know which needles to select. Um, and all this information should be in your manual. 
And so normally if you've had the electronics, it would be coming through on here to tell it. No, so the way the brother machines work is there's a mechanism underneath the bed. Oh. The timing belt is only used to tell where the carriage is and like we hook into it and it gets a little stiffer to move, like trend editing. Yeah. Let's hook into the belt on the back and that's turning these things in here that's and then telling us where back it is. The other way. It doesn't go back the other way when it's in the middle of a row. Okay. So you gotta get to the end and then you can go back. Uh, you gotta get to the end of the needles. You don't have to go have to do all that. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. And it moved everybody to uh, upper working position because it doesn't have a pattern loaded. And that's just the default state. But the thing that's actually doing the patterning is a bunch of like little nubbies underneath that move around and they force the needles through a different part of the carriage. I think it's over here and that forces them forward to upper working position. Um, a friend of mine has a really good video explaining how it works. I'll send it to you and link it in the description. All right, it's time to knit your first swatch. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you like to pick out a pretty color of yarn? Let's see. All right, so grab the tail, grab the end. The other end. The other tail. Okay. <laughs> and then you want to drop it behind the stand and hold on to the end. Does it matter where it goes behind So the we're stand? going to feed it through the yarn feeder, so we just need it somewhere underneath the yarn feeder. So even in the, in here is okay? That'll work. Um, you gotta be careful with that though, because there are things sticking up and the yarn might get stuck on them. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll be okay. Okay, so first it goes through the loopy like here. a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and then up through, nope, through here. When you say through, is it through the back? Okay. And just pull it tight and make sure that it's against the cylinder in there. Okay. And then That's through this. not in tight. Yeah, I guess, no, not in tightly. <laughs> Doesn't there, need to be okay. tight. There we go. But yeah, that's good. There we go. Now it's in there. Ah, so if you okay. see there's like a little nubby in the back there, you just want to get past that. Okay. And then it comes through here. And then you pull down a wire and you feed it through the end. There you go. And then you can park it in here. If you just like shove it down in that slit, it'll stay. There we go, you're threaded. Okay, now the easiest cast on that I've been using in all of my intro videos is every other needle. So grab your needle pusher and <clears throat> select every other needle on both sides of zero. So the, the bed is numbered conveniently. So I get zero and then on its way out. All right, so shake. push all yeah, these back. back. All right, and then I mean, it doesn't have to be precise, right? No. Okay. And this is just a swatch. It doesn't need to be perfect. Not all the way out, but that's fine. <laughs> um, and then we need to put the sinker plate... <coughs> oh, my voice is going. We need to put the sinker plate onto the carriage. So grab it from the back. And then all right. it just fits in here. Can you these guys fit here? Okay, and then you gotta yeah, screw the things in. So is the little brace that was here, was that just for traveling? Like, so it doesn't- Yeah, just around. to keep it from, okay. from scooting around. And did you have cast on combs in here? Oh, we do, we didn't talk about those. Let me grab them. <laughs> okay, so this is cast on comb. It has little hooks that fit into your work and you can use that to weigh it down. And then we have claw weights in your box of tools. You need both of these things. And you probably want more than two claw weights. I have questions about these. What questions do you have? Uh, my question was about how do you know when you have enough weight? That's a lot of trial and error. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of like figuring things out as you go. If it's, if you have too little weight, the piece is going to get all gnarled and not knit correctly. If you have too much weight, it'll be hard to move the carriage and you might drop stitches more often. Okay. But then, so I watched a lot of your videos. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I tried to do, do, do some, some more. Okay. <laughs> um, but I noticed you only put them on the outsides. Yes. So why are they only on the outside? So the work on the machine is all stretched out. It's stretched out both horizontally and vertically because okay. generally the needles are a little bit farther apart than the stitches will wind up when they're done. So 
as the piece gets longer, the section in the middle has room to shrink in and get to its normal size. Okay. And when it does that, you lose tension on the sides of the work. So there's more tension, there's more weight on the middle than there is on the sides because the way they're pulling in. Okay. And if you, if you ignore the edge weights and just try to keep knitting, your stitches on the edge will start to drop and have problems. Okay. So you add the edge weights. And then sometimes you add them in the middle when you're doing like short rows or you're doing the neckline of something. But that's more advanced. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to try and get a swatch at this point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you have every other needle out. Yeah. And now you want to feed the yarn to the carriage. I'm going to set these down for a second. Yeah. So, all right. Feed the yarn. And there's a little latch here. And you want to go all the way into the back. There's position A in the back and position B in the front. Okay. And then close the latch. And then generally... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have learned something. So it, the yarn just doesn't doesn't just stay there. <laughs> um, if you are paying enough attention, you can just hold on to it and keep going. <laughs> but another option, and let me show you, is to make a slip knot. Okay, and then secure it down under your table somewhere. Okay, and that way, when you put it in the thing, it just hangs out there. All right. <laughs> All right, so four is a good tension for this yarn. Okay. Take the care of And draws. do you just know that from having used it? I've used this yarn a lot. Okay. All right, bring the carriage across. Ta -da. Oh my gosh, look! <laughs> and little stitches. You have yarn on every other needle. Now you need to grab the cast on comb. Okay. And hook those needles into the yarn you have on there and try not to catch it Generally, you have to pull the tail out so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. And this can just go anywhere on it, kind of centered? Yeah, yes. you have to center it because it's a little hefty and you don't want to okay. lay it on weird. And I'm just going to do a little more. So I'm just, just catching them, just yep. like that. Okay. But see, now you yes. cut a bunch of the tail. And that'll create a massive loop there. Okay. And I would hang a claw weight on here. Okay. Because this is not quite enough weight on its own. So shut the claw weight in there. There you go. Now you want to bring the rest of the needles forward in your section that you're knitting. The, uh, the rest of the needles forward in the section. So you brought every other needle forward. You want to bring the other ones. So too. I guess use this guy. You can use whatever you want. You can use your so fingers. Do I want them to be t all aligned? Yeah. Okay. So I can, well, we're just going to use fingers then. Because I don't want to grab past. Okay, and it doesn't have to be precise. Nope. Right. Okay. The carriage will figure it out in another row. There you go, you're knitting. <laughs> so you want to take a look at the first row and see if you have any dropped stitches or anything's yep. going wrong there. I did. did. So yeah, I got one here. Okay, um, that's not a drop stitch, it just didn't get hooked into the cast on comb. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But you probably want to hook it into the cast on comb, so grab your latch hook tool. Oh, oh I can right there. Okay. And reach up under, under, under the cast on comb, so behind it. Grab that stitch and just hook it in there somewhere. Okay. It's probably good enough. All right, keep knitting. Okay, you got your hand? Ow. Yes, it just, just okay. squished on my finger. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. I just... <laughs> I'm learning, don't put my hand right in front of the... Uh... You gotta be careful, yeah. This is much harder than I expected to... All right, so let's stop for a second and look at what's going on here. So... Oh no! This is not the end of the world. <laughs> so on the edge here, you have stitches keep piling up. So this needle is not knitting correctly. And that's likely because it, this needs some edge weight, and this is where we secured the yarn, so it wasn't okay. quite right. Um, so go ahead and shove the claw weight in there. So actually, just, let's fix what's on the needle first. So I'm just pulling it back to get all the needles to fall off. So okay. I'll get all the loops to knit through. Okay. And now you can shove a, a claw weight in there. Nope. On, into the work. Oh, into the work? Yeah. Just like that? Nope. Oh, well, <laughs> So here, you want to shove it like right in there. Come on, you hook it up as high as it That'll work. Okay. So 
So it's pulling down on the work. If you were to put it like right here, it would pull down on the whole cast on comb and not give you quite what you're looking for. Okay. okay. You got a loop over here. Oh no. That tends to happen when the tension wires aren't quite right. And my camera should be high enough that the tension wires aren't getting stuck right now, but should keep an eye on that. Okay. So should I try to remove the loop? No. So it's really hard to remove loops like this after you've gone a couple rows. The best thing you can do is hide it in the seam when you're done. <laughs> okay. um, and to help, pre help prevent it getting stuck, you can just shove a claw weight in there and the claw weight will keep the loop down. <laughs> I mean, can you tink? You can. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to tink on a swatch, but... I will show you how in a minute. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. So keep knitting a couple of rows and let's see if these claw weights solve the problems. Got no more loops. Here, I'll okay. hold it down. Is it normal to, for it to be a little... <laughs> it's Tough. normal to be a little stiff, but hold on, let me see what you're actually experiencing, because I have more experience in yeah. it. <laughs> that is a little stiff. So we, it is a little stiff, so the first thing you want to try is turning the tension up. So let's call it like six. When you say, so you're turning the tension, oh, that means the loops will be big. Maybe this is just easier with the machine clamp to do. <laughs> okay. Oh, and now we've got too much tension going on here, which means that it's not feeding nicely from the cone. Okay. It's is probably it a little too far back. The the yarn? Yeah. A bunch of stuff you have to keep an eye on. Okay, so here's your little swatch. Okay. And Let's, let me show you on knitting first before we get to the next thing. So you pull the yarn out of the carriage, slide it all the way over, and then what you're going to do is pull up and that removes the loop that's currently on the needle and puts the previous one back. Come on. And usually it's like this back and forth motion. You see what's happening? Can I try? Yeah. You make it look so easy. I've done it a million times. <laughs> what did they do wrong here? So the loop Pull. got stuck on the latch. So okay. push the latch up. The little... Yep. And there you go. I have a feeling I'm getting really good at this. <laughs> so it's often... So machine knitting goes really quickly. So it's often easier to just start over. Oh, wow. Okay. Unless you're working on like a complex piece of lace or something. But especially when you're a beginner, it's hard to recover from these mistakes and you will learn a lot in the process of like trying to recover, but it's often easiest to just start over. Okay. So let's say, let's say this is it. Can I move this back and just redo it? Or do I have to go to the end of the row? You have to go to the end of the row. Okay. You could manually knit those stitches, like okay. push the needles in and out by yourself. And it's hard to get even tension that way, but it is doable. Got it. So it that would be if you were doing something complicated and you just wanted to fix that row. And... Yeah, or like you found a minor mistake that you wanted to recover from. There you go. Okay. And then you want to push the needles back as far as they go. And then pick the carriage up. Like CR, actually yep. up. And then lift it up and then put it on the other side. Do I want to move? I guess I'll You can feed the yarn into it later. Okay. There you go. Okay. And then now, make sure you put the yarn back in, because if you forget that part, you'll drop it all off the bed. <laughs> Close the gate and keep knitting. That is easier Sorry. than that. Oh, and you got a big loop. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, as you were unknitting, the tension wire was taking up a lot of the slack until it no longer was useful. Like, oh, the so tension wire was all the way so you should pull down on from where the cone is and it'll Got it. you out. Well, it, it's all good. You're learning. <laughs> but I mean, in this case, since we've noticed the loop right away, couldn't I hypothetically? You have to unknit all the way. No, you know what I'm doing that right now. <laughs> okay. So when do I have to move the, uh, am I just I'm making just more loops? Oh, okay. No, that's the previous. When do I have to move these guys? So when you see the work starting to pull in, I'm just tying a knot in this and I'm doing a very bad job. <laughs> okay. You see the work starting to pull in, see like it's okay. making that curve there. So that's when I would pick this up and yep. just stick it in there. 
I'm gonna frame this thing at home. <laughs> Your very first swatch. It's already going much better than mine did. Mine wound up a snarled mess. My first like 10, 15 swatches were snarled mess. That's not gonna hold anything. And so you can start going back and forth. Okay, I can feel this getting tight again. So that means it's glue yarn is caught on something. Oh, I'm just there. There. <laughs> is that, I guess it's on camera, sorry. It's fine. <laughs> it's just not a good place for that cone of yarn. So here, what I normally do is just take the cone, drop it behind the bed. Oh. And then it sits on the floor. I'm going to 3D better. print something. <clears throat> I'll make you one too. Okay. <laughs> and so you just go back and forth. Yep. You can really pick up the speed. Yeah. It's a really workout. It really it is. is. <laughs> All right. Stop here. And let's say that you were making oh, a I, gauge I, swatch for a project. I got really into it. So now it's starting to curve in. Yep. You would want to move the weights up, but I want to show you how to mark these swatches. So if you were making a gauge swatch for a project to see like how many stitches and how many rows, yeah, you want to mark this so you could recreate it later. Okay. And we were knitting primarily on tension six. Okay. So you want to put six eyelets in this. Okay. So, so eyelet. You take the transfer tool and you put it over a needle. Usually I start about two from the edge. Okay. So it's one, two. Okay. And pull it all the way up. Pass the latch, push it back in. You probably want to use two hands for this. Okay. And then lift up off the needle. Move one over to the left. Like that? No. Oh, you're, oh, you're that's, that's, that's the, the gate peg. That's not the needle. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna put it on the needle. And then just lift up a little bit to get the, oh. All right, there we go, I got it, I got it. I got All right, it. you got it. <laughs> you got one, now you gotta make five more. Five? Oh, okay, because we're marking six. Yep. Okay. Over the needle. Over the hook of the needle. Over the hook of the there needle. There you go. Here. Pull it out. Use your other hand to pull it out past the latch. There you go. Push in. Okay. Lift up. Over one. Oh. So generally you want to angle it up a little bit. There you go. Okay. And then your latch is closed, so you can just, there you go. <laughs> I am newbie you this. Your, you let your loop get a little too big. I know. Yeah. And it's okay to put your hand against the work. Just hold it down. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you how I do this. <laughs> okay. So you want to keep all the loops in the same line. So over the hook, pull out past the latch, pull it back in, lift up at an angle, and then just straight over. And you see I put my hand against the work. What? My butter. <laughs> Once you do this 12 bajillion times, it's all right. <laughs> All right, we did that one. We're doing this one this time. Okay, so, at, oh God, okay. So, pull out. Nope. <laughs> you got this, you got this. Okay, out, out push in, in over, push here. Over. And then put your hand against the work to leave the, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I think you got it, you got I think it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, that's, hence the hand against the work. Okay, got it, okay, so. So, okay, you're putting too much, a little too much pressure on it. You're getting the, the yarn caught on your tool. Like you're sandwiching the yarn between the tool and the needle and it's pulling the whole thing out. You don't want to do that. Okay. There. Yep. Lift up. There you go. And then. Oh, just you over. didn't quite miss it. You got. Oh no. <laughs> Hang on. I thought I, I was like, oh, this one's going great. Well, it's kind of on there. That's good enough. It's <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna count that. Do I have one more? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I got one more. Okay. So out. Wait, 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 wait. So uh, let me show you what's going on here. Okay. I'm just gonna reset this real quick. So what you're doing is you're putting too much pressure on this and it's grabbing the loop of the yarn as well. If you just like float it in there and enough to pull it back, you're not gonna grab oh, it. It's not gonna come out. I see. Okay. So I just put it in lightly. Yep. There, then back, then up ever so lightly, and then here also lightly. Yep. There you go. Oh, that was much easier. 
Okay, and now I have two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six. All right, and you need a couple more rows. But first, look at how your needle butts are back here. Oh, they're... You want to keep them in the same line? Because this one all the way back there is not even going to knit. Okay. All right. <laughs> there we go. Around. All right, we're probably good there. So now we need to bind off. Okay. To make all of these live stitches not so live anymore. And the technique that I recommend for the LK150 is very different than the technique I recommend for this because this is very fine yarn and it's hard to do a latch hook bind off with this stuff. So I do a gate pig bind off. And let me demonstrate that for you. These are the gate pegs. These okay. metal numbies here, they help keep the yarn in the right place. So it's very similar to what you were doing with the eyelets, only you want to go on the other side of the gate peg. So I'm going to pull a stitch out. You bring the needle all the way out put the yarn over and then push it back in and that creates a loop. And then we grab that loop. And we go behind the gate peg onto the next needle. Come on. And then push that all the way out and knit one. So you're like transferring and then knitting and then transferring and then knitting. And it looks easy because I've done it 12 bajillion times, but you should try. Alrighty then. Okay, so this one just needs to be transferred. So this one is just getting transferred. Okay. So over behind the gate peg. Yep. peg. Okay. I did not have your precision yet. That's okay. You'll get there. Um, once you get it on the needle, I will correct your grip. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. So, oh, can't get it off. <laughs> There we go. All right, All right. So it's easiest to put your thumb on the top of the tool and your fingers on the bottom. Okay. So now you want to knit. And that's just... Normal. You got to pull the, the hook out far enough so that everything is past the latch. Oh, no, no. All right. So <laughs> when the needles are past, the, when the loops are past the latch and you pull it all the way in, they're just going to fall off. Okay. So you want to put the, the next... <clears throat> nope. There you go. And then pull it back with the other hand. There you go. <laughs> All right, so now I am gonna do this. You wanna transfer that stitch? I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you just corrected me on that and you're okay. learning. Behind it yep. and then over. And then try pulling, instead of just lifting up, try pulling out. Try pulling out. So here, put the needle all the way back in. So yeah. behind the gate peg and then put your needle over and then pull the whole thing out. Nope, nope, just pull out. Nope, there you go. Just pull. Just pull. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go. And now over. And now back. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Um all right, so here. Remember thumb on top, fingers on the bottom. <laughs> you wanna hold it like parallel to the bed. I'm so oh I'm so bed. used to penciling. It's not pencil. Are you sure? <laughs> Okay, here, where is it? Okay, there we go. All right, now up and over behind the peg. Maybe, and then just pull out. Just pull out. There you go, and keep pulling until everything's past the latch. Okay, and then over it. Yep. All right, I, 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 I'm seeing it. I, I do not have the rhythm yet. You will get it. You want you do this 12 bajillion times. <laughs> This is a nice stable bind off and binding off around the gate pegs keeps the selvage edge consistent because when you're doing other kinds of bind off, it takes a long time to get the muscle memory to keep the loops the same size. Now I shouldn't go quite so far. You want to, you probably want to put more attention to the backs of the needles on the front. Here, let me show you one more time of my technique. <laughs> Cause I like, I don't even think about this anymore and I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to help you. So this one, did this one knit? Yeah, so it's not pointing down at all ever. It's just straight up parallel to the floor. Ah, and Down okay. here and then loop and then the other hand. You do one more time. So up, everything's parallel to the floor. Onto the needle, pull everybody out, over, pull it back in, and then I immediately push it back out past the latch. So it's set up for the next one. Okay, you try. Okay. 
So, go on, okay. So, there, over, what? You wiggle the tool a little bit, there you go. Ah, okay. Oh, no, we need to get all the way back. No, yeah, it is. Okay. And then, back. And then push it all the way out with your hand. Your, your hand is still there. Push it. Push okay. it all the way out. Not back. Out. This there one. you go. <laughs> ah, okay. Did I want? Yeah, I did. You want, want to it. knit? Did you knit already? Okay, there you go. No. Is this the size you would normally do for a swatch? I probably go a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, getting a good gauge swatch is actually harder than you'd think on the machine. Because just in terms of size, or just because the amount, like a, a lot of factors, contribute to what size your stitches are, like how much weight you're using, and like how moist that day was, how humid that day was. <laughs> um, so like a bigger swatch is better, but also I've heard people say that like if you're making a sweater, make the sleeves first, and then get the gauge from the sleeves, and that's the gauge for the rest of it. <laughs> Because a big piece is always going to give you a better option. And, like, especially when you're learning. So it's like, just make the sleeves? What? Like, just, instead of making a swatch, just make So you make, you make a, a swatch, and you make a guess at what the, the gauge is supposed to be, and then you make the sleeves, and then you get what the gauge actually is, and hopefully it's not too far off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course, all of my patterns require gauge information to be entered before they'll give you a pattern. I, I dropped it. I, I was. If you can't get it with the, that tool, you can always use the hook tool. Sometimes it's a little easier. I will not be thwarted. Oh, no. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, I've created problems now. That is just way back in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You get it? You no, want some help? No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Back there. Oh, yeah. I don't know where it went. It disappeared. I have completely right. lost it. Let me see if I can perform some surgery. <laughs> Oh, there it is. It was just almost mostly undone. So I'm going to take the latch tool, and this is one that's still a live stitch, and I grab it there and then stick it back on a needle. So it doesn't cause any problems. Okay. Yeah. Oh, disaster averted. Okay. Let me find the live end of your <laughs> tail. I need to undone one more. All this just for a swatch. There we go. Well, you're learning. <laughs> okay, that one just needs to be knit now. And okay. then transferred. Okay. Um, you will make a snarled mess. You will drop pieces off the bed. You will drop stitches in important places. It's all just part of the learning process. And the convenience of machine knitting is that it goes really quickly. So when you screw up, you can just try again. I think this one just got a little snug because of messing up. This is actually really good for your very first swatch. <laughs> See if I can find photos of my first swatches. All right. Was one of my first swatches? <laughs> wow. All right. I feel like I, feel... I said snarled mess. <laughs> what that was what on you... the river though? That was a, like a one by one rib. Yes. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and then this. And then I like to knit one more stitch in that same one to pull back out again. And then knit one more. And then so here's it. And then you can cut your yarn with my tiny scissors. Oh, oh dear. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I just seen that coming. Okay. Put it where you think. There we go. All right. All right. Now pull the weights off. Because if you forget to do that, you're going to drop it on your foot. <laughs> I usually just throw mine into the back of the case. 
and then lift the whole thing up. And you want to pull that last loop all the way through. And like that. Pull it off the cast and go. Maybe. <laughs> I have some nice loops there, so you know, they, it's, uh, they've grown attached. All right, okay. good. Let's see it. Let's see your first swatch. I'm gonna sleep with this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Tam 3-ply Astrocrel. It has been oiled so it goes more smoothly through the machine, but that means yeah. it needs to be washed before you know what it's gonna look like. Oh, interesting. And that is true of all machine thing swatches. Like, it's weirdly stretched out and it's gonna take a couple days for the fibers to relax and like a good wash and block before you know what it's gonna be like in the final garment. Got it. So you, every time you do a swatch, you are going to wash and block and... Yes. And you cannot switch, skip the swatching step when you're machine knitting. Good to know. And I tend to be... <laughs> <laughs> I know hand knitters do that all the time, but you can't because you have no idea what your stitches are going to look like. And if you're like knitting a sleeve and it seems way too long, wait until you get to the end. Because it's going to shrink up? Yep. Okay. Because like the weight is holding it down. There you go. All right, while we have this set up, do you want to try your cotton yarn? <laughs> no is that an acceptable morning, answer. I mean, I'll try it. All right, is it caked? Uh, ish. It's, ish. It, <laughs> it isn't, a, they're, they're not, here, I'll show you what it is. It's not in cakes. It's in, oh, it's like these weird woundy things. Yeah, it, it, it's not skeins, but it's, yeah. There's the, this is what I started with. That's going to get caught on stuff. It needs to be caked. <laughs> really? Yeah. The ball's going to roll around. Because, okay, so as as you machine knit, the yarn feeds very quickly. So the ball is going to roll around and, like, this is going to get caught on stuff. Actually, is this a center pull thing? I didn't know they could do that. If it's center pull, that'll work. I uh, probably, yes, it is. This one is center pull okay. right now. I think I pulled from the center. We can try. <laughs> Gonna turn the tension all the way up to <laughs> All right, so I do this all the time where like I have a big snarl of stuff and I just shove it in the back of the thing. And then all right. just pay attention to it as you go. <laughs> if that's the end, go ahead and feed it in. Should I just feed it to the other side or should I pull this one out? Feed it to the other side. You can leave the other one in there. Um, this machine actually has multiple spots for a tension mast. So there's one in the middle and then there are two over here on the side. So if I'm using, if I'm, so this is from uh, my local yarn store. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, so it's not going to be oiled and... You want to go through here first. Oh, thanks. Um, and on the other side of the blue yarn, other side of blue yarn. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So it came from your local yarn store. Yeah, so I assume it sounded like this teal was specifically for... This is twisty. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> it was specifically for machine knitting, mm -hmm. um, hence the oiled, uh, smooth feed type aspect of it. Yep. So this one is not going to be that because this is just from local yeah, yarn store it's knitting. it's probably not coated. It might still work. You'll have to see how it feeds. Um, it probably will be fine. Does the same rule for swatches apply? Yes, you have to swatch everything. <laughs> you always have to swatch. You can't get around it? No. Okay. <laughs> Anyone tells you that you can, they're lying to you. All right. All right. Every other needle. <laughs> they don't need to come all the way out. They just need okay. to be positioned. That's fine. Uh, and then feed your wanna... yarn into the carriage. It doesn't matter what side the carriage is on? Nope. Yep. Okay. Not for this. And you can hold it in your hand. Okay. I'm just gonna... Bro. You got it. Okay. And then hang the cast on coat. And I don't need to worry about this little guy anymore. Uh, I will show you the thing when we get there. So you can see how long, so here it's gone from 65 to 50 something. Yeah. So 
you can just find the middle, like that's 60 to 50, 55 to 55 is about where it's even. Okay. And then I always pull this guy up and then go down there. And then for this long tail, actually I should have done this before we put the comb in, but on the other side of the comb, there are these like clippy things. No. Oh. You can stick it in there and it'll stay. You want to pull it nice and tight. Oh. Okay. Ah, now it's stuck in the machine. <laughs> Okay, bring the rest of the needles forward. And then keep knitting, and I will hold the machine down. Okay, let's take a look at that. <laughs> and that <laughs> giant clump. That looks pretty good. All right, I would put a claw weight in here. Okay. It's actually knitting pretty well. Decent. Keep going. <laughs> so let's say I'm knitting along mm -hmm. like this, and I can, because at this point, hypothetically, I have been knitting for at least, you know, <laughs> two hours. hours instead of <laughs> five minutes. Um, and I see that this is the, the, that it's, it's bigger than I'd like in terms of gauge. You can just turn the tension down. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's really obvious where the start and the stop, where, where you change the tension within a swatch. Okay. Sometimes you might want to start over. It really depends on what you're doing. If you think you can remember that you turn the tension down and then the final tension is only like the top section, then you can go ahead. So if I wanted to try this down, do you think, or would you not recommend going down to nine? Oh, yeah, go this? for it. Okay. <laughs> um, so it looks like he has 9.66 and 9.33. <laughs> There are like <laughs> intermediate points, yeah. Okay. And I guess you could just play around with this and say, okay, I'm gonna try it at nine, now I'm gonna try it at eight, and now it has not, it doesn't function, so we're gonna go back up to nine. Yep. Got it. The point of a swatch is not just to get the gauge, but also to figure out like how the yarn knits and how it looks and what you like. So at this point, this doesn't look like it's going in too badly, so I don't need to move this, right? Not yet. Okay. But in a couple rows you will. Can I try going down a little lower? Oh yeah, go for it. This is your machine, this is your <laughs> yarn. You can try anything you want. And I will be here to help you recover when you screw up. <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's part of the learning process. It's just, it's gonna happen. Uh oh, hang on. Tension go. Ooh. Here we go. It got oh, it got stuck on. Yeah. But I can feel it. So there you go. <laughs> I okay. have one yarn back there that I always, when I'm knitting with it, I keep a finger hooked on the yarn, like it's coming from the tension mask, like so I can feel it. No, on the carriage side. Like, oh, like that? Yeah, so I can feel when it's going to have problems because it is very problematic. <laughs> this is about when I'd start doing the claw weights. Okay. And you can, you gotta like tilt them forward because the. There you go. And if you get them a little too high, they sometimes get stuck in the bottom of the carriage and bent out of shape, but. It's fine, you can bend them back, there's like aluminum or something. And if they get really screwed up, you can just buy more. How far would you keep going for the swatch? Oh dear, I just <laughs> oh you that. The <laughs> All right, this is fixable. Okay. So you're gonna take your claw weights off. I'm just gonna set them down here for a second, and then pull this off of the yarn. Come on, and and just not use the cast on comb. Nope. Oh, no. So these are just metal hooks. You can stick them wherever. 
There you go. Back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I just put the yeah back on there. It's not hooked in there very nicely. What did I do? I don't know. I'll try that again. <laughs> I was overconfident. So I just like lean it forward and then try to shove all of the hooks in there at once. <laughs> That's probably good enough. And then hang the claw weight there. Keep How do you know when enough is enough? This is my chance. You gotta kinda eyeball it. Um, and remember that things are probably stretched out more vertically than they are horizontally, so you probably want a couple more rows if it's gonna be a real good swatch. Do I want to do my lace things? Yeah, you should put your eyelids in. Okay. So, does it matter what side I do the yeah. eyelids? Just as long as there are eight of them. As long as it's enough information for you to understand how to recreate the swatch. Got it. Okay. Let me see if I can remember how to do the eyelids. So, do. You gotta pull out past the latch. Oh. And then push it back in. Yeah. I caught it. Hang on. What am I doing here? Oh my god. Okay. And then in front of the eight pegs, go to the next one. You probably want to pull down the work a little bit. Just like tuck it a little bit. There you go. There you go. Mm, don't pull out too far. Okay. There you go. I dropped half of it. It's fine. It's a gauge this, this is the thing with cotton that I it will say. Splits. Yeah, it does. It's very splitty. But it's just a gauge swatch, so it's not the end of the world. All right. All right. Let's take a step back for a second. So these loops are starting to fall off. They are. Those um, that's because they're out too far. Okay. So... Just, there you go. Stick your transfer tool in there and try to shove it back on. And then pull those needles all the way back. Oh, that's just totally... Just went AWOL on the... Okay. Pull that... Guy back. I guess this is the problem with doing eight. Yeah. You gotta do eight of these things. <laughs> and then you gotta bind all off. There are other options for binding things off if you don't want to do it on the machine. We can do a waste yarn and then you can do a sewn bind off later. Oh no. Hang on. Why don't we try that? Just for... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so you went over the gate pig on that one. So when you try, Oops, if you tried that, to that do was it the more, that no, was... leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. <laughs> Grab your uh, hook tool and just pull it up in front of the gate pig. Because <laughs> if you were to leave it there and you kept trying to kept keep knitting down, that row would try to stay there and the rows would all bunch up. Okay, so just go there up you and go. Up. Okay. Now they're just on the gate bag. <laughs> well, hopefully this makes all your viewers feel better. <laughs> this is really helpful for me to like understand <laughs> where beginners struggle because it's been several years since I was a beginner. Oh dear. That happens all the time. <laughs> the tools miss the bucket entirely. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Woohoo! Okay. All right, knit a few more rows. Hold on the floor. No, oh, I forgot to check if there was some kind of a little loop. Oh, I didn't. Surprising. Crap. <laughs> I'm very nervous about doing this. If this falls on your head, it will feel terrible. <laughs> I got you. Am I good? Uh, 
I, I have a weird thing. You stitched it, didn't it? Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Happens in my hand knitting too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cut your main yarn. Actually, leave a long tail, like about three times the length of that, and then cut it. Leave a long tail. What? Say again. We want a long tail. It's about three times the length of this, and then we cut. Okay, I'm sure it's going to later. <laughs> So then we want to pull this yarn out of the carriage, and I usually pull it from here. Okay. And then grab the red yarn. I use unmercerized cotton as my waist yarn because it doesn't like to unravel. Okay. Feed that into the carriage. And then a few more rows. I really want to turn the tension down to like four. This is fairly thin. You can just let that hang up. Okay. It's not going to go I'm worried it's going to pop up the way. Keep going. All right. So this needle is not knitting. Oh, no. It's because I still dropped one. I know, but it's in the right place that it should continue knitting. Um, it looks like the latch was just stuck and I unstuck it. But if it doesn't, mm, that needle probably needs to be replaced. But you have a bunch of spares and you know how to do that now, so I do. we'll get to that later. Okay, so now we have a bunch of waist yarn at the top, and you're just going to cut the waist yarn. Just anywhere? Anywhere. Remember, it's going to spring up. There you go. <laughs> Put it back in the thingy. And pull the weights off so they don't fall on your feet. Okay. And then just hold it down with your hand and run the carriage over it. Ta da! Mm. All right, just watch. And you can do a sewn bind off later with that long tail. And when you say a sewn bind off, oh, I think, did I like do two stitches on? I don't know what. No, I so did. it looks like you made an eyelet and then the needle stopped knitting because uh, the latch is stuck. The needle oh, is really nice. Nice. Okay. It happens on occasion. Um, so when I say sewn bind off, I mean you're going to look at the live stitches and you can very easily see where they are, differentiate yeah. the red, and you run a needle through them. And if there's a, actually instructions for it in your manual. Got it. And it's just... Oh, okay. It's like back and forth. I like this. What are you planning to make with that? Something like this, basically. There's not enough for a full sweater. It was So I bought this yarn, actually, and that yarn for this, and mm -hmm. then I ended up liking this one better. Um, I liked these colors, but I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. So, still not sure how it's going to turn out. There's a lot of yellow, <laughs> and the pink section is very tiny. Mm. So, but yeah, it'll probably, it's, it, there's not enough for a full sweater, so it's just going to be kind of a summer shirt type thing. Makes sense. All right, so we've knit a couple swatches, and you now know how to use your yarn machine. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fitting is hard. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so but I have I have some questions about this. Okay, much. sure. Um, <clears throat> um. Okay, so I changed my tension mm -hmm. uh, part way through, and I can sort of kind of tell, but not really. Does that mean it kind of wouldn't matter, and I could go with the? <laughs> Let's see, so. If you really wanted to be as perfectly correct as possible, you should start a new swatch at your new tension and just use that and not worry about this. Okay. But if you want to fudge it a little bit, you just wash this one and like measure your tension up here instead of down here. Right, but if I, so okay, so if I wanted to compare them, I would need to do a new swatch at the other tension. Yeah, there's not nearly enough of, to, to of really it. understand yeah. what's going on, especially because it was at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. This is bothering me, but like you can this in a little bit and it's a little nicer edge. Oh. This is not what you'd use on a garment, but it's a good enough for a uh, swap. Right. Um, and I've got a bunch of videos on how to do better cast on edges. I like the little folded hems that you have, mm -hmm. but I'm curious if there's anything like, I mean, I know what they are in regular knitting, like German cast on or the... So the, so the closest thing to what you get with hand knitting is called an e-wrap cast on. Okay. Um, let me just show you that real quick. So, Does that have the same stretchiness? Yes, it is very stretchy. Um, where's your cast on come? Oh, here it is. Okay, 
So generally, actually, let me push this back. You want to keep using the cotton or should we switch back to a... We can just use a waist yarn for this because I'm just okay. going to demonstrate. We're not going to do a whole swatch. So this cast on comb has these little things on the ends that turn in and out. Mm -hmm. And that is to hang it on the bed. So you can stick it between the gate pegs and then turn the thingies in and it'll stay there. Okay. And then I'm going to bring out a few needles and they go like through the cast on comb because that one, that one needs to go on the other side. Come on. Um, so then you can cast on out here and then not have to worry about hanging the comb later. Oh shit. So shit, let me clip it into the thing. And then in e-wrap, you just go up through the needles and wrap it. Is it e-wrap because it looks like the letter E? Yes, it looks like the cursive letter <laughs> E. Oh my god, I'm at practice. What do you, which one do you usually do? Uh, so my starting edges are usually either ribbing or folded hems. Okay. And for swatches, like this takes forever for swatches. So swatches, you just do the ever the needle cast on. Uh, but this, let's say that's my whole cast on. And I'm just going to leave the yarn hanging in there and get rid of the rest of those needles. You don't need those. <laughs> and then push the stitches back and then do the clippy things and bring it forward. Oh, what's it stuck on? And then it goes... <laughs> it's unbalanced because it's not in the middle of the pen. It would fit in the distance between there. Okay. Do you want to wait? Oh, wait, I'm going to try to balance it out. There we go. And then the carriage is on the wrong side. In here. And then you got to be careful that these guys don't catch on the yarn. <laughs> That? Yep, that <laughs> happens. It looks so good on it. Is it the same one that was having issues before? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just an issue on the edge. <laughs> you really need clamps for this. <laughs> okay. And then that one. And then take this off and show you what it looks like. Ta -da! Everything is stuck everywhere. <laughs> and that's what the cast on edge looks like. The top one here. Yeah. It's not the nicest thing, but it's a little bit better than the other one. Okay. Um, generally, if you're want, if you're making a garment, you're either going to add ribbing to the bottom, which you can do because you have a river. Not that it'll work with this machine at this point in time, but <laughs> that or a folded hem, or you will just cast onto waist yarn, and then do a sewn thing to finish it. Okay. And the river won't work because of that. It doesn't have the brackets. doesn't it has the brackets on the bottom, and I'm going to show you that later. Okay. Um, so, any other questions? Um, hang on. You got a list. <laughs> Go for it. So, so let's say that my yarn runs, so this is more because of this kind of yarn mm -hmm. where it's not nearly enough. Uh, how, how do you switch yarns in between? So first thing I'm gonna say is never play yarn chicken. <laughs> <laughs> because if you lose lo yarn chicken, you lose a bunch of stitches. Okay. Because it's hard to tell mid row. Um, but when you get to the end of a skein, you stop at the end of the row and you pull the yarn out and you usually just like let it hang there. Okay. And you feed your new skein in and put it in the yarn feeder and you keep knitting. Okay. And it creates like a bit of a, a large loop on the edge, which you can just pull on the tail of the new skein and the old skein to get it right. Generally, when I do this, I like, after a row or two, I tie the two ends together and with a square knot and just come back later and fix it up. Okay, so you don't do it in the middle of a row. No. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I have done it before. It is possible if you like, if you realize you're going to lose yarn chicken in the middle of a row, but you still have a, like a bit of a tail left. You pull the yarn out of the feeder and you feed the new one in like immediately in the middle of a row okay. and leave enough of a tail and hopefully you only drop like one or two stitches. Okay. And not. But well, probably better just to tank and then. Yes. Okay. Stopping and then undoing is probably a better option. Okay. 
Um, I guess that's the same. So I had a question about switching colors. And so that's probably the same thing. Wait till I get to the end of the row and then. Yeah. Switch. So they're actually like little notches underneath the, the edge of the bed. Can you feel that? Yeah. Okay. What you would do is you would pull your yarn out of the feeder and shove it in the notch. So it's like out of the way on the edge. Okay. And then start the next yarn on the same side. Okay. Okay. So if, let's say I was doing stripes mm -hmm. as an example. So normally when I'm hand knitting with stripes, I will carry the yarn up the side. Is that the same thing with machine? Yep. Okay. Uh, how can I translate a regular pattern to machine? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, there's probably like a whole PhD thesis over somewhere. <laughs> but, okay. So the gauge that you get on a knitting machine is different than the gauge that you get by hand. Generally okay. the stitches on a knitting machine are shorter. Okay. So it, you could try and try and try to get the same gauge that your pattern has, but it's much easier to just work with a, whatever gauge you get from your machine and your yarn. And just do the math. Yeah. So like if you have the dimensions of the thing you're going to make, you need to do the math, you need to change like the rate of increases and decreases and stuff. And it's going to be different for every pattern because patterns aren't really standard. Okay. So could, but you could effectively, if I had, let's say, let's say this pattern that I was, you know, I, Let's say I like it and I could effectively follow it ish once I figured out my gauge and then say, okay, I'm going to, you know, do increases, decreases. Now this one's in the round. So yeah, I don't know you how that need works. to add inside seams. Okay. Got it. So this does not do in the round. No, you can knit in the round with the river. Okay. Got kind of like, I mean, you can make cylindrical things, but <laughs> it, it, it's not quite the same as knitting in the round. Got it. So most often the knitting machine ones are done by pieces and then... Yeah, you knit it flat together. and then seam it together. And okay. uh, on the knitting machine, generally things are done bottom up instead of top down. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Because decreases are easier than increases. That's part of it. And generally your cast on edge is going to be a little nicer than your cast off edge. And there are a bunch of patterns on Ravelry from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Machine knitting patterns? I think there's only one designer who's still writing knitting patterns, and she only writes patterns for the LK150, which is a mid-gauge, and this is a standard gauge, so she doesn't do, like, generators or any kind of the stuff that I do, but you can go look at it if you want. Okay. I think that's that, those are the questions I have right now. Okay. So we are now done with this machine. It's time to pack it back up. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So there are actually instructions in your manual. If you need a refresher from okay. that, but I'm just going to walk you through how to do it because... So I'm guessing let's just put the yarn away first. Yes. Do you want to pull your yarn out? <laughs> put all your needles back in and then the tools go in the box. Do you just usually have your machine out? Oh, that's yours. Yes, I leave mine out all the time. Somehow. Leave it all the way open so we can see. Oh. <laughs> you can see me mess up and not be able to put things together. Looks like it should go in there because it's got a picture of it. Don't forget your claw weights. No, those go here too. I'll make this fit. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. There we go. Yes. All right, and that's going to sit on the bed. It actually has like a little groove in the back. So it fits. All right. And then tension mask. See if you can figure out how to fold this up. I like puzzles. You want to fold it in. Anyway. All right. Does this guy also fold in? It goes the other way. There you go. Okay. All right. Do I want to lock this in first? Oh, we forgot a tool. So let's start with the pokey things first. So like these guys, these extension rails fit. Basically, go in here. There's like a little pocket back here. Okay. And then and this thing has to come off. And 
it goes this way. I appreciate the photos. It just kind of sits there? Yep. And then the tension mask goes in next. And then bring the wiry thing down. Actually, I think that this is supposed to go on top of the tension mask. Like that. And then that should fit under the metal hook right there. I see that holds it in. And then the lace carriage needs to stick in there. I think the back of it goes in first. Okay, and that's why things don't fall out. Yep. And okay. then this guy. So this. So it goes into this metal part here. There you go. And then it catches around here. And you gotta fold the handle down for the lid to go on. Okay. And then fold the handle down on the lace carriage too. And then this comes up over. Oh, we lost a cast on comb. Let's just set it down for a second. This goes in here too. I never remember how. Like, oh, there's a giant cast on comb. Yep, there's one that for the whole length of the bed. I'm just gonna put it under this thing. Call that Luna. There we go. Is it? <laughs> Go under that thing there? Mm, I don't know. I think that might be for the tension. Oh, those guys. Okay. Anyway, let me flip it over. Actually, it probably is easier to hook this part on the front first and then put the rest of it back. So let's rotate it all the way. And then the front here. I don't know. Line it up. Got it? I think so. Oh, the box is in the way. <laughs> it's probably it's easier to do on the table. Probably would be. Yeah. All right, I'm move the box right here. So my first hour of business is getting some clamps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> getting a mechanism for the clamp. So there we go. All right, I think I'm straight on my side too. I can push the latchy things down. All right, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> what do you think of your first vending machine? Ooh, um, well, I'm excited about it for sure. Uh, but uh, it's I'm a little intimidated to be perfectly honest. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the whole swatch thing yet. Um, <laughs> you have to swatch. <laughs> um, I'm probably gonna need to just make a sign for my 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 room and just say, don't forget to swatch. Um, so, but uh, but overall, I'm I'm excited about it. I I think that at least me personally, I'm it, the hard part is going to be slowing down and actually learning the basics because <laughs> I want to. So I mean, I come from the fashion side, and I very much want to jump into patterns and designs, and you know, let's try making this out of knitting, and let's try doing that. And I my skills are not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> as as was clearly demonstrated it's it's very similar to hand knitting but it's a very different hobby yeah <laughs> um, i recommend you start with a hat just a rectangle not socks so <laughs> socks were my first project this is the first thing i made on a knitting machine i would not recommend starting there okay hat hat it is um, and i also have a lovely pattern for dog sweater okay um and then can it be enlarged if you've not looked at my pattern website, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's parametric. It's you know, or, it's okay. My pattern, parameters. Are my like... pattern website is all pattern generators. So you enter the measurements of your dog, and then it'll give you a sweater look for at your the dog. patterns. I haven't and the code. I haven't really looked at the generators. Oh. But I mean, <laughs> I don't. 
They're, they're all generators. <laughs> all right, excellent. I will, ge- I will then, yes, I will try generating on size XXXL. There you go. <laughs> Rachel is now set up with her 910 and knows how to use it for the most part. <laughs> it's going to take some time to get all the muscle memory and remember everything as you go, but I'm confident you can get there. So this is the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something about a knitting machine. I'm going to link to my beginner tutorials and my buying guide if you're interested in getting the same kind of machine. Uh, and then we're going to get Rachel started on her river, and that's going to be a separate video. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and stick around. Um, and then my outro is always, thanks for watching, happy knitting. You want to say it with, say it with me? Sure. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for, for watching. watching. Happy, happy knitting. knitting. All right, we're done here. <laughs>